very good good morning good afternoon and good evening thank you all for finding time and visiting today's webinar seeking the blessings of his holiness jagadguru shri shivarateshwari deshikendra mahaswami ji galu i dr paras member sig cardiology at jss academy of higher education and research i suru welcome you to the part one of webinar series hosted by sig cardiology before we start i would like to welcome dr ravindra principal jss dental college and i would like to invite dr b nandlal team leader sig cardiology to introduce our guest of honors dr b nandlal with his vast knowledge and experience have been actively involved in academics and research for more than 30 years and spearheading the sig cardiology at jss dental college and hospital for more than 11 years over to you dr nandlal uh, thank you uh, thank you dr paras Greetings to one and all. I extend a warm welcome. Greetings to one and all. I extend a warm welcome with the blessings of His Holiness of JSS Academy of Higher Education and Research and from SIG and from SIG of Dental Cardiology to the participants and our guest speakers of the day. The SIG is a special interest group established way back in 2011. under jss academy of higher education and research faculty of dentistry with a thrust area of understanding developing translating research in the field of dental cardiology and on this occasion we have with us dr manjunath registrar of jss academy of higher education as one of our guests and honored to invite the speakers and the participants thank you sir for being here with us on this virtual meet along with him we have a privilege to have the president of indian society of pediatrics and preventive dentistry dr danu rao who is also heading the department of pediatric and preventive dentistry at ames dental college and hospital at raichur i welcome you sir thank you yeah it is an honor to have here with us uh, the dental council of india member and general secretary of indian society of pediatrics and preventive dentistry dr nikhil shrivatsava who is just going to join us shortly because i i think there is a connectivity and he is also the dean and of the college and hospital we welcome him on this occasion thank you dr nikhil for all the uh, help and assistance to give us uh, during the uh, initial phase of organizing this time we also have dr sivakumar nevolu today as a panelist to make his this scientific session more interactive uh, thank you dr sivakumar for accepting this uh, to be join us he has been instrumental in establishing masters program in pediatric dentistry at the two of the leading institutions in south india besides this he had occupied the highest position of presidentship in ispd in the past and is presently an active editorial member of various journals i welcome you and appreciate you for joining again for this pa panelist as a panelist in this meeting thank you sir i welcome you let us now begin with a much awaited webinar inauguration and opening remarks from our guest dr manjunath sir please take the lead and declare the session open along with the president and secretary of ispd excuse me immense pleasure on this occasion to declare this open along with uh, two privileged colleagues uh, of mine dr dono and the secretary of dr kill so one or two initial words which i would like to say is regarding the department of uh, periodontics is spearheading the research in our dental college and just to one or two words regarding our uh, accomplishments we are ranked 10th in this uh, national institutional ranking framework and in the time share education in one of the sustainable development goals particularly good health and well being i am proud to say we are uh, number 1 in india and number 20th in the world so with these few words i would uh, request along with uh, dr dhanu so can make initial remarks and uh, i would request uh, uh dr nikhil also to make initial remarks and then we can declare the session open over to dr venu sir thank you sir uh now we would like to hear the presidential address from our president 
of Indian Society of Periodontics and Preventive Dentistry, Dr. Danu sir, please, please give an opening remarks yeah. for this program. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good afternoon, all. <clears throat> it's a great pleasure uh, that JSS Dental College is uh, organizing this uh, webinar. It is one of the top universities. Mm -hmm. yeah and hosting a joint webinar series with a, on dental cardiology in association with ISPPD. Following the system, since a way back uh, where teaching never stops, it has been a continuous effort by the institution to conduct teaching and learning activities. I know JSS very well, like I was uh, always uh, with uh, uh, Dr. Nandla. Having hosted ISPPD conference in 1994, and the first PG convention in 2005. Dr. Nandlal, uh, former general secretary of ISPPD in 1995 and uh, president of ISPPD in 2011, I think, has now organized this wonderful platform for the research group of dental cardiology as needed, especially at this present time. It will be highly appreciable for all the participants and the society at large. I wish all the uh, participants uh, a great learning experience here. I think with this, a few words, uh, even I declare this web series open. Thanks a lot, uh, uh, JSS Dental College and the management as well as uh, Dr. Nandal. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Danu, and for your uh, kind words and uh, uh, declaring this uh, webinar series open. Thank you. Uh, I think Dr. Nikhil is still at to join, but uh, we would like to thank him for uh, giving us the formal approvals from the head office to carry out this uh, webinar. And that to a large number of two participants are registered, and I can see the numbers increasing. I'm Dr. Paras uh, Mull, who has been one of the organizing lead person along with me. I'm sure he will keep updating as and when the uh, session starts. Uh, already we have crossed 195. Uh, right now, I am, and the registered are much more. I think uh, they are waiting for a, a, not a trend as usually we do innovations very long in India. Uh, the international speakers are there. We have made it very short to suit everything so that we can have the real meal of uh, listening to the lectures. And uh, um, uh, I would like to say that let us not stop learning and get prepared to manage the present pandemic and. and see what we need to tackle and deliver to our society. And I hand over back this to... Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, um, that was a nice experience of virtual inauguration. Right now, we have more than 200 participants on board and the numbers are increasing. For those who have joined us now, I would again like to welcome you. Moving on quickly, we have two international speakers with us today with a, with a presentation of about 45 minutes each. The, particip the participants who have any questions during the webinar, you can just type them in a QA and a chat. At the end of the, each webinar, we shall post it to the panelist. So the first speaker for today, Dr. Pratip Pantumavit, I am happy to introduce him for the topic of management of early childhood caries. Dr. Pratip is ex-dean, faculty of dentistry, Tamasad University, and board of members of Thai Dental Council. He also serves as the WHO advisory expert panel on oral health since 1988 and, and past vice chair of public health committee of World Dental Federation. He is former dean, faculty of dentistry, Konkane University, and founder dean at Tamasad University Dental School in Thailand. He has been the founder of Household Water Defluoridation Device and co-founder of the Atraumatic Restorative Technique for caries control. His research interest has been on fluoride for caries prevention as well as appropriate restorative, restorative and preventive care for primary teeth such as SMART. I'm happy that Dr. Pratib accepted our invitation to share his vast experience in this field and be a part of the webinar series. I request Dr. Pratib to kindly take over. Thank you. Thank you very much for your kind invitation for me to join you today. Uh, I, 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 my, my topics that I am uh, prepared for you today is on the, uh, 
management of uh, early childhood calories. And Dr. Patip, uh, can you see? Can you see my slides? You can, no, you have to share your slides. Uh, you need to share the, share the slides, which is a uh, uh, green, green icon down or on the top. Two hundred twenty three. Can you see my slide? Not yet. So, can you? Yeah, we are just getting to it. We are trying to see your screen. Uh, just a moment. Uh, meanwhile, you can see whether uh, you have a lower column. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We'll allow the, the, you to make you as the host. One, just a second. Uh, I, I cannot. I cannot get in. Uh, he, you have, you'll be yeah. made the host now, and now you can. can you yeah. Now? Okay. Can you yeah. Now? Great. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. okay. Please you. proceed. Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. My 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 topic with you today is uh, management of uh, early childhood carries. Okay. Can you zoom it or uh, maybe, uh, maybe you can. A uh, doctor Nickel. I think he's joined us. Yes, the, the, Welcome, this Dr. is my, my outline for, for today, okay? So first uh, I think we, it says okay now, uh, uh, and now. Yeah, yeah, you it's okay. We would okay. like to, oh, just a moment, I would like to welcome Nikhil Srivastava who has just joined the meeting. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, Dr. Nikhil, welcome you to this uh, gathering. Thank you of so the much, web series. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for the delay. Actually, this was the time. No, I, we had just finished the meeting in the university, and I just rushed to this thing. I'm so sorry. For I know. Day. Yeah, yeah. So I understand you have additional responsibilities as a DCI <laughs> member as well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so we much. welcome you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, sir. It is, so we will uh, maybe uh, the session will start now, and uh, maybe you Please. can give your remarks uh, uh, maybe in the after the first speaker. Yeah. No problem. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, would you like to say something now? And, uh, you can. No, no, the, it, it is real pleasure to have Dr. Pratip and Dr. Elia both uh, on this very, very useful uh, uh, webinars uh, as far as pediatric dentistry is concerned. Uh, we have been having a lot of webinars in different uh, uh, subjects of pediatric dentistry or sub subjects of pediatric dentistry, but this is one of its kind. So, congratulations to Dr. Nandlal for having this kind of webinar. And uh, uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Pratib and Dr. Elia, uh, for enlightening all of us. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nikhil. I think we'll proceed with the session and yeah, we'll please. look forward more interaction uh, as the, sure. we go through this. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Yeah, Dr. Pratib, you can take over, please. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, Sorry for I, the interruption. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, just my my my, my uh, outline for today. I think many of uh, us have seen this uh, ECC in in the young children. Uh, so now in just this year in 2000, uh, uh, this year uh, 2020 in the carry research, there's a terminology of dental carries, uh, especially they have a definition on the early childhood carries that it is the onset, early onset of caries in young children. It fast, fast progression, this is the key word, it's fast progression. Uh, and, and the epidemiology in definition is that any, even non committed death or committed death due to caries is also called, uh, under the age of six is called the early childhood caries. 
but for the uh, the lay definition of ECC, we, they, they make a definition as a tooth decay in preschool children, which is common, mostly untreated. I, I would like to emphasize on here that mostly untreated and can have profound impact on children's life. Uh, so, so this is this is the definition of the uh, the ECC uh, at the moment. Okay, and you look at this uh, global prevalence of ECC. Uh, they they make it by the prevalence uh, of the uh, if India and Thailand almost the same that we are about 50 percent, 50, 50 to seventy five percent, and the the the, the uh, light color is a bit less. This is about ten to twenty percent, and this one maybe twenty five to fifty percent. And this is about uh, uh, more, uh, 50, uh, 50, uh, more than 75 percent. You can see that in the region, uh, in our region here, we have a quite high carries rate in, in, in ECC. This is also a quite a new, new information also. And, and if you look at in, in Asia, as I uh, showed uh, to you, I think India may be about 50 percent, which is Thailand. Thailand and as, as, as six years old, uh, five years old, about 75%, and three years old, 50%. And all the others, you can see that they are very high um, in, in, in this region. That's why the, the carries uh, ECC is very high in this part of the world. But uh, in the meeting in an um, uh, publication in 2019, la, uh, uh, last year, they say that untreated dental carries in primary teeth affect more than 600 million children worldwide. So this is a, a, global, a global problem that we as a pediatric and dentist, uh, you, uh, uh, you have to be aware and how to, and to, and to see how, what shall we, uh, can be done on, on this one. And then they said that an unacceptable burden of ECC, that ECC is an unacceptable burden for children, family and society. So I think this is another key word that I think and we all know that dental caries can can be is a preventable disease. But why why we have uh, untreated caries in family teeth very high per, per, uh, number in a worldwide like this? Uh, if you look on the and the dental carries that does in 65 percent meaning out of 455 uh, uh, carries only uh, 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 on uh, uh, um, some more ECC only uh, less than two uh, and two teeth uh, under the DMF, but half of them have been filled already. So this is something that is can be done, but we are not yet thinking that as a pediatric dentist we have to think, to think about this. How can how can we do on, on, on this problem? This is the the BHO map also. It's said about the global age pattern of parents of untreated caries. In the deciduous state, this is in the in the deciduous states in the young young age group. This is uh, the the permanent teeth, and uh, and this is uh, uh, the 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 perio, and this is the the this uh, the to last um, impression you see you see that is very high, the uh, the primary teeth and uh, untreated caries is very high, all over the world. And the progression of ECC. There are some study from long time ago, from uh, since uh, uh, 1998, and they, they said that the, the first year maybe the carries uh, and the uh, carries go to the upper incisors, incisor and upper lateral incisor. The second year is all maybe it's, uh, upper central incisor and lower first molar, and three uh, and three years old lower second molar and, and upper uh, first molar, and four years old to uh, lo uh, come to the lower second molar. And five years old is all of them uh, uh, carries. So this is an, another thing that is we need more information on this area. That whether now today whether it's the same the same pattern or not. And what shall we do if we know the pattern of the carries and the progression in, in the young children? And we can plan what shall we do and so to prevent the carries in young children. And the effect of the ECC in preschool children. Yes, and we say that uh, uh, severe untreated carry is very common in many countries. 
they found that children with untreated caries and ECC have significant poor oral health and related quality of life. And they found that in, in, in UK, they found that and following treatment of affected carriers, there is more rapid weight gain and growth velocity of the treated children. So you see that the ECC will leading to the uh, general health, to the quality of life of the children also. If they have the untreated carriers in their mouth, they cannot have a better gain and cannot have a better development in the young children age like that also. That is uh, uh, the introduction of the ECC. So management, uh, management of carriers. The terminology of the management of caries uh, in 2016, they say that dental caries management should be limited to situations involving control of the disease through prevention and non-invasive means at the patient level. So you can see that now they, they mentioned the word non-invasive means uh, in, in for, 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 for caries management, especially in, 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 in the children also. So uh, this is uh, uh, another thing that we have to think that if we would like to do the, uh, the caries management or carry prevention or caries control in the young children, it should be the non-invasive means if possible. So we have to know in, uh, in, the, in the journal in 2019, uh, uh, Professor Titanov from New York University uh, and his group mentioned that there's a risk factor in the social and behavioral uh, including the parents, caregiver, uh, uh, the uh, SO, uh, socioeconomic uh, of the uh, of the parents and children exposing meal sugar containing snacks of average, um, a bottle of non non spoiled cup in the added sugar uh, at that time of um, breastfeeding beyond the twelve months uh, or something like that, and also the mother or primary uh, 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 caregiver active carries and also the child has special health care needs. Another risk factor on the clinical is that the student have non covid that lesion on the inner male defect. So this is another thing that we, uh, we would like you to be careful that now we have, when we're talking about caries, we are not talking about cavity anymore. We have to talking about the non covid that lesion if possible. And the child has visible cavity of uh, feeling uh, due to caries. And they shall have plaque, visible plaque on the teeth. This is a risk factor uh, for, the, uh, for, the, uh, for the ECC. But there's also a protective factor. What is a protective factor of ECC? It is a fluoride. No matter it's a fluoride in water, a fluoride, a uh, 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 toothbrushing with fluoride toothpaste, uh, uh, for a topical fluoride uh, 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 in fluoride varnish or whatsoever. So this is a protective factor. If the children have something like this, it can be prevent, uh, prevention as well. Uh, talking about the ECC and breastfeeding, uh, there's a paper in, in 2015, they said that why breastfeeding has sometimes been mistaken as a risk factor for ECC in the past. It is actually protective and associated with lower parts of uh, uh, carriage. But however, breastfeeding beyond 24 months of age has been reported to be associated with increasing risk of ECC. This is also very new information. So breastfeeding is good, but you have to uh, be careful not to, uh, uh, to, to have it uh, too long uh, uh, beyond 24 months. And at the same, same time, maybe not at, the, at, at night or something like that if possible. And there's another systematic review of the evidence base uh, and that uh, and the, and the uh, risk of the early childhood carry. They said the best available evidence indicate that breastfeeding up to two years do not increasing ECC risk. And, uh, but uh, you have to have together with the fluoride in water or the educated caregiver uh, uh, for, for the ECC prevention. And you have to limit that sugar in water or, or complementary food uh, also. So this is a risk factor. So sugar is a very risk factor, as we all know. But now we are talking that we would like to limit the sugar as much as possible. The pre prenatal oral health uh, uh, from, uh, from the mother also is, uh, has a positive effect on incidence of early childhood caries and s in caries in, in, in children. This is also a new information in 2019, but we all know this from, from the long, long time, but there's a more study in this area recently. We are talking about the oral microbiome and ECC. 
there are now not only we're talking about the step mutant, but now they found the many other type of bacteria, uh, Fusobacterium, uh, Provotola, uh, Leptosensitia, Capnocyphaca, uh, and uh, all, all the other. Also, it's a prediction of ECC recurrence. And also, the high number of uh, M, uh, M mutant Septococci colonies also more in the shield than with the ECC than, than, than the caries free. And also, they found that the caries microbiota sample were characterized with high relative abundance of uh, uh, Septococcus mutant, Provitella, and, and, bif uh, and, and Bifidobacterium, and Scandaria. So there are more bacteria to be uh, studied in this area. We, uh, when we are talking about the, 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 uh, the ECC, we are now not focused only in Septococcus mutant. And the, one of the uh, important things that I would like you to, uh, to consider is the uh, criteria for detection of ECC. Uh, in recently, also in, in, in 2018, from the Community Dentistry and Oral Epidemiology, we published one paper we call the Protocol for Early Child Food Carries Diagnosis and Risk uh, uh, is especially for ECC. We make it only in three, three, four category. So ECC zero, ECC one, smooth surface uh, uh, spot, white spot lesion, smooth white spot lesion. ECC two, in the male breakdown. And ECC three is a, a dentin breakdown, a cavity into dentin. So with this very simple definition, we can make an early detection of the early lesion of the, of the young children. And we can do some management as much as early as possible also. So I would like you to, to look into this paper and if possible to try to collect some information based on this rather than based on the, the WHO, uh, which is the, the, the based on ECC3 only. But actually, I saw you, caries is not the cavity anymore. So this is an early lesion. We have to be careful on, on this one also. And with this, uh, in, in the same paper, they also identify the high risk, medium risk, and low risk of the student also that the high risk is a student uh, and have, have the plaque, high plaque score or the dentin uh, 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 cavity, uh, ECC3. If they have ECC3, ECC2, is, then it can be identified as a high risk already. Okay. But the medium risk is uh, in the child age of three or older, have only ECC1. If they have only ECC1, we call them medium risk already. And low risk does mean there's no ECC zero, that means all teeth is perfect. This is a low risk uh, also. So with this, you can plan something uh, if possible. For example, with the ECC one, ECC one, ECC one or non cavitated that in a male white spot lesion. This ECC one is equivalent to IC dust uh, score one two or ICC MS initial. It's the same. It's the same, 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 same group. So with this group, you, you can consider. Uh, the 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 full right uh, uh, full uh, full the toothpaste full right varnish and uh, to apply on this white spot lesion or something like that and then it can be uh, a regression uh, after that also but this is something you can easily do and the parents can do the same also with the uh, when it come to ECC two or the uh, is ECC two is equivalent to IC dust score three four or ICCMS modulate. What is this? This is a cavitated enamel or non-cavitated dentine. In this group, you can, you can, uh, you can make a calorie measurement through the Furai varnish, sealant with gas anomer or something like that. So this is something that you can consider if you uh, uh, identify some caries in some teeth or any teeth with ECC1, ECC2, ECC3, you can uh, doing something uh, for them very early as, uh, as soon as possible. And at the ECC3 or ICC that's five, six, or the ICCMF level of restoration. Um, uh, so, so this is something that I would like you to try to see that this is a, a simple but easy and but also is especially Design for the ECC uh, uh, diagnosis. So please consider on, 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 uh, on this uh, criteria. Next, we will discuss uh, on, on the um, primary prevention uh, of ECC. 
this is uh, from the uh, uh, paper from uh, 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 from uh, 2019. Uh, for, uh, for, uh, they summarized from the Bangkok record and declaration that we have in Bangkok in uh, 2018. We have in a meeting in Bangkok of the AAPD, International Association for Pediatric Dentistry, uh, we all together all around the world. When, when we have a discussion on this one, and, and then we make a, a, a suggestion for management of ECC in that meeting. For the primary prevention, primary prevention, which means that this is before the cavity started, before the disease started. So what and what shall we do? And then and they think and they suggest it to be limited free sugar intake in foods and drink for children under two years. This is now is very, very important. Now we try to very much promote on, 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 on this one that the children under two years of age, no matter they drink milk or drink or food or whatsoever, uh, no adding sugar at all. Uh, and also avoiding baby butter and breastfeeding beyond 12 months. As I told you, this is the one, but and I, I just discussed about, uh, uh, on this uh, slide, we just, just discussed about the management of ECC, which is a result from the uh, IAPD meeting in Bangkok in 2018 and published in the paper in 2019. That, uh, the highlight here and the private prevention, that's it, before the, the, uh, the, the disease started, and we, uh, they, they very much focused on the limited free sugar intake in food and drink in children under two years. So avoid nighttime butter feeding, milk or drink <coughs> containing free sugar. And avoid baby butter and breastfeeding beyond 12 months, especially at the night of frequent one. And also the, uh, the primary prevention, and, and as you all know, uh, uh, full in water, full in salt, or full in milk, and the beach or, or recommend. And also the topical full ride, can 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 be recommended, especially brushing twice a day with fluoride toothpaste containing at least 1,000 ppm. In this meeting, uh, in the IAPD now or at the WHO also now we recommend that even in the young children, we recommend you to use the fluoride toothpaste with 1,000 ppm. But as appropriate amount of toothpaste on the brush, a similar amount for the children under two years and size for the uh, 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 three to six years. So this is something that I think uh, 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 maybe you, uh, you should consider that primary prevention is very important. So if possible, maybe you, uh, you have to uh, uh, transfer this uh, information to, uh, to, to uh, uh, people all around. Okay. So in the last year, last year the, uh, uh, it's the uh, Alliance for Cavity Free Future the team for the World, uh, World Cavity Free Future Day <coughs> in 2019. Then we focus on limiting sugar for under two years can lead to a lifetime health benefit. So this is, we, uh, we, uh, we think, we believe that this we, we also co coordinate with the other, uh, uh, <coughs> other factor also uh, in, in the young children. So the under two years should not eat sugar at all, if possible. As I told you, in the, in the uh, six months to, to, uh, to three years old, you can use a smear amount, just touching only this, but you have to use 1,000 ppm for right to pass, but just touching, not more than that, in order that, uh, to avoid the, the ingestion of, uh, uh, or swallowing too much of uh, full right to pass. But from the three to six years old, we can use the pea size or the or the width of the of, of the brush or something like that. But we have to use one thousand ppm as a person and twice daily also. So this is a really key and uh, simple. But in, we have not yet emphasized enough for the people, especially in the rural area or in the general people, to um, to using the full right toothpaste in the young children uh, appropriately. The second uh, one is a secondary uh, a prevention of ECC. This secondary prevention of ECC is from the same, same paper. Uh, as you all know, secondary prevention means that when the caries uh, uh, already starting, that means we have to make the early detection of incipient caries. It's the key to prevention uh, cavitation. That's why, that's why uh, as I told you, the ECC1, ECC2 is very important. If you detect ECC1, ECC2, then do something on that, at that time you can stop the caries. 
and stop the progression of the caries and it will not become the cavity. So uh, what will you do on, in the secondary prevention? If you uh, have the early de detection of the incipient carry, you can apply more frequent fluoride varnish. Uh, if there is uh, uh, more caries in, in, the, in the oral cavity, you can apply up to four times a year. Normally, as you know, fluoride varnish we apply uh, uh, twice a year. But in the, in the, the high caries, in high ECC case, we can apply up to four times a year. And also, we recommend they recommend to use the glassonomer cement as a dental sealant, which have several favorable property in, in, in the preschool children, such as fluoride release, uh, uh, chemical bonding to enamel and dentin, as well as the moisture, uh, uh, reduce moisture sensitivity. I know many of you using the, uh, 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 the resin sealant, uh, 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 but I would like you to try the glassonomer sealant, which is maybe practical and maybe. Uh, especially in the uh, working in the field, there's uh, evidence-based uh, uh, clinical practice guideline on the non-restorative treatment for caries lesion. This is in in 2018. Uh, they, and they says that uh, if you used to arrest or reverse non-covid that caries lesion, this is non-human. This is remember this we are talking about the secondary prevention. This mean non-covid that uh, caries lesion. On occlusal surface and primary teeth, you can use uh, sealant and and full light varnish every three to six months. It depends on the how uh, how how much is, uh, is the risk of the of the uh, of the student also. Um, but if you use sealant alone uh, or full light varnish alone, then the evidence will be less. You can use it together. And to arrest and reverse the non cavitated deterioration on the approximal surface, then full light uh, 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 full light varnish. Even every uh, uh, three, four months is still with uh, uh, low and very low evidence. So it's not very good for, to prevent the approximal surface of the primary teeth, but it's good for the occlusal surface and, and smooth surface. And so for the smooth surface, and the, this one, they said that 5% full eye varnish every three, six months is also recommend with moderate to low evidence. But in this paper, uh, they, they recommend to use the Covid lesion, they recommend to use the SDF, but it have to be 38% SDF. So SDF is silver that I mean full ride, and twice a year by annual application was strong recommend over 5%. But it just mean that they found that it's better give a better result on carry prevention than than full ride one -ish. So, so uh, no sealant is uh, also has been studied since 2009, 2010. The same customer sealant and resin base is the same kind of carry prevention, but uh, customer is better because it's, uh, it's moisture for giving uh, and also have a, uh, a full light release from customer and full light recharge as well. And customer can throw into the pit even is uh, gone, it still has some protection effect also. And on the tertiary, and uh, tertiary prevention. Tertiary prevention does mean they have a cavity uh, already. So silver diamine fluoride uh, is uh, now pop, uh, popular to use uh, in the cavitated lesion. In in US now, the the group are using a lot in uh, more and more in 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 uh, in silver diamine fluoride. In Japan, in Australia, they are using a lot. In Asia now, we are starting to use more. In Thailand, we are use, starting using more also. But in, in tertiary prevention, that we're talking about the conservative caries removal and tooth restoration may be necessary. That means uh, and to conservate, uh, uh, conservative and tertiary prevention approach support by the WHO Global Consultant on Prevention of, uh, of ECC. So the use of ART with uh, using the class number cement for created lesion is recommended. And class uh, uh, number cement may be considered, especially for the uh, uh, class one and class two, class three, class four. This can be can be can can be used also uh, to inhibit the secondary caries, but also the full cow uh, 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 full cow uh, the hall technique now also has been recommended to use it in as a tertiary prevention also. Let me talk a little bit on on the SDF. What is SDF? And the mechanism of SDF is that an SDF is a zero diamine full ride. So when you apply silver, they mean for right to the decay surface. It has to be on the decay surface, especially in the in the dentine caries. You know, 
the 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 layer of the silver protein will get to form and increasing the resistance to acid and uh, 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 dissolution and enzymatic and, and digestion. The silver and protein will form uh, at that area and then and to prevent the the carries uh, uh, to progress on. And hexapeptide and pluripeptide on the uh, exposed organic matrix, uh, matrix also will uh, will uh, will work along together with silver chloride and the metallic uh, uh, silver. Also, and, and silver uh, SCF can also inhibit the protein that break down during the the, the exposed dentin or uh, organic matrix also. And silver ion also can be used as a, as you all know, silver ion is a, 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 as a antibacterial uh, effect to inhibit uh, the uh, denature protein. So SAF is better than other uh, anti carriers and medication, especially in killing bacteria uh, at the moment, even in the detrinal tubule. But you please note here the last one that I, may, I, I emphasize here that silver and fluoride on penetrate. Only 25 micron into the inner mail, but it can go up to 50 to 200 micron into the dentine. So it's very good for the dentine carries, but maybe not as good as uh, as uh, in the inner mail carry. Okay, so that's why that's why some people they believe that SAF can be used in, as a secondary prevention. Some people they said that it can be used in the tertiary prevention. It depends on 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 uh, you believe. Mm -hmm. Also, in, uh, in uh, last in last year, the FDI policy statement about the carry lesion and first restorative treatment, they also mentioned that in the progression, in case of progressive cavitation in deeper dentine, and, and uh, carry removal should be using selective carry removal should be considered as a minimum invasive dentistry. So this is another thing that I would like you to to be uh, consider more carefully when you are uh, working on, on, on the caries, especially in the young children. If you use a selective carry, uh, carry remover, it will make less pain uh, for the children also. And they said that initial or moderate active or inactive carry lesion do not normally re, uh, 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 re require and, uh, uh, tissue remover. So moderate to severe inactive carry lesion also do not require uh, uh, and this uh, uh, carry remover. But moderate to severe active carry, this is inactive. Now, we mentioned that this is inactive. This is active. But if it's uh, active carry, you know, they need minimum invasive tissue remover. That's what, that's what uh, I mean about the selective carry remover. And they also re they recommend the restorative material it should be considered, they recommend to consider high viscous grass owner, especially for primary teeth. But for permanent teeth, they recommend more uh, in the resin base and, and so. But on uh, high discharge customer also re can be recommend, and also re re they recommend the, the cloud, as I told you, the uh, hard technique. So this is the the, uh, the uh, evidence based uh, uh, strategy for minimum invasive treatment in caries lesion uh, literature review in in, in uh, 2018. The set sealant for even in, in, in the primary teeth uh, is also have a strong evidence to support. Uh, smart or uh, deep cavitated lesion, we use selective removal to soft dentine and all stepwise uh, excavation support by strong evidence. The use of ART or selective removal to firm dentine also support by strong evidence. So, all these we recommend that uh, minimum intervention in dentistry should be considered in both non cavitated and cavitated lesion, support by moderate and strong evidence. So we are now uh, in the in the fast developing world that if you're working on like this, you know maybe you can working and uh, in the young children uh, with uh, what we call the now stay on the uh, um, uh, the pandemic uh, uh, of the uh, uh, COVID uh, right now. You can consider this as a non aerosol uh, carries uh, 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 treatment as well. So the paradigm in cardiology is changing from the past. We're talking about a dew and fuel restoration. But now we would like you to consider the seal and heal operation. Just means you don't need to do, you don't need to use the bird, you don't need to use the, the aerosol, which is um, an invasive one. 
seal and heal does mean if you just remove selective removal to uh, 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 of the of the dentin and uh, and also um, and put the glass on the which is can be healing the uh, uh, that that in that area. So this is something that for your consideration. That's the paradigm change in cardiology is uh, coming up very soon. And also the evidence base uh, uh, on the pediatric dental restoration. Now they recommend the glass on the for several uh, 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 favorable uh, property, chemical bonding, chemical expansion, similar biocompatibility, uptake and release fluoride, and this and decreased moisture sensitivity. So this is something for your consideration. This is from the 2015 Journal of Clinical Pediatric Dentistry. So uh, as uh, uh, someone from JSS and uh, Professor Nanda, I was invited last year to, to, to give a lecture on the smart preventive restoration. What is smart preventive restoration? And this smart is an abbreviation from Simplified Modified ART, which consists of partial carry removal or selective removal to soft dentine and encapsulated customer cement. This is, um, uh, we, we have been uh, try, uh, trying this in, in, in JSS uh, and a few other dental schools in, in India as well. But there is another smart. There's another smart, and, 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 and this is another smart they call, uh, in USA. This is from, from California Dental Association. They call also smart. Okay. And is this abbreviation from silver modified ART, but they apply SDF, SAF on the dentin carries and, and restoration with glass and glass and cement as well. So there are two smart that which I would like you to, to consider for, for, for your situation in the future. So this is uh, what we call the, uh, the, uh, the IAPD in Bangkok Declaration in 2019. They summarize the three prevention uh, as in that. First, that the raise awareness of ECC to the community, to the lay people, to other uh, health profession, and to, be, uh, and to be awareness of ECC, to be preventable. And also, avoid free sugar for less than two years old. And then also have pride twice a day brushing with uh, 1,000 ppm toothpaste. Sanitary prevention also twice a day brushing uh, with a full right toothpaste and arrested uh, the, the advanced lesion uh, by the first year applied to see the dentist okay. and apply full right varnish and SDF. The sherry prevention, non-invasive care, SDF or sealants, and also the appropriate uh, tooth preserving extractive care Smart ART or ITR. I, in USA, they use ITR because it's the same word. Thank you. Just two more. Okay. So this is a recommendation yeah, from, yeah. from that Bangkok declaration. Is that okay? That, and the recommendation is to raise awareness of ECC. Yeah, yeah, please proceed. Okay. Limit sugar intake uh, under the two years of age. And so, and toothbrushing twice a day uh, with full toothpaste with 1,000 ppm, and provide preventive guidance in the first year of life by a health profession. Mm -hmm. And this is also uh, get along with the FDI policy in 2019 that we have to shift from carry uh, in caries management from restorative treatment to measure that arrest and prevent caries development. So they said all, ca all initial carry lesion should be treated by use of topical full ride. So this is also on the same line that in the in the past few years there are a lot of change in 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 in, in ECC prevention. So my last slide to you or last word to you today is that early detection or early prevention in early age with appropriate technology. I, with this, I conclude my 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 presentation. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Nanda and and the group. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Pratip. Uh, uh, Paras, would you in? Yes. Thank you, sir. It was great to hear from you regarding the various updates on the factors associated with early childhood caries, diagnosis and management. Now, I would like to invite Dr. Sivakumar to kindly moderate the Q&A for Dr. Pratip and give the concluding remarks. Thank you, Professor Pratip. For, uh nice presentation i have to uh, go back to my pg days uh, in manipal when i uh, remember meeting you almost uh, three decades back 
right thank you when you visited manipur uh, later also I, i used to visit you during uh, some conferences and meetings so it is nice to reconnect with you back again on this platform and i thank you and dr nandalal sir for uh, this opportunity to meet uh, professor pratip again thank you thank you uh, so there are a uh, few questions i think uh, audience has I will had a questions or one yes sir should i should i read the question shivakumar yes sir you can yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah i so, so the, the question, question few, few frequent, frequent questions, questions. or uh, asked is uh, could you share the pdf <laughs> so now i would i think i can answer this uh, we will be putting it on a youtube uh, which will be available from the link from our uh, jss website or even uh, directly also and uh, there is another one more common question is uh, uh, which uh, i think from institutional side is uh, 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 do we will have some more pro i think uh, it was answered i think it was exactly like uh, um, it was on a programs what are the other programs so we do have series of programs coming up even next on 15th we have another program coming up yeah so can you see the questions dr shivkumar i i cannot see okay i will read out uh, so please, please read to me i can see the question yeah uh, is the ecc uh, passing from mother to child prenatally uh, been uh, reported is uh, the ecc uh, yes. in, in, in uh, passing from mother to child because earlier studies have shown uh, there is transfer of strep mutants so is there any study references which uh, has worked particularly in ecc i yes. remember i remember one study in the past uh, but about ecc okay any particular studies yeah okay okay yeah, that I, is I one question. question now right yeah i i i think the 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 uh, the, the carries and the carries is and uh, passing from the mother to child it has been well accepted uh, uh, in the past a lot but uh, re, uh, but res, uh, recently there's a paper that they mentioned that i show in one of my 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 presentation that just they show that the uh that's the mother the carries from mother or the caregiver can can uh, passing to the uh, to, to the uh, to the young children as well so so this is still one uh, as possible no, so what i uh, understand is the question is actually the in a misunderstood uh, stood the uh, way way it is a uh, question it is because a, they are thinking that it can be passed prenatally from mother to child Sorry. Uh, actually the pratip was mentioning about the prenatal oral health of the mother which can have an influence in care, uh, transmitting this stress mutants to from uh, like the caregiver to the child postnatally it is not about the prenatal transfer postnatally this can have an influence that's why prenatal counseling also is very much important i think that's what yeah he wants to say right, yeah right 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 yes yes right. Uh, that's right, what right. Uh, anticipatory guidance like uh, before yes. even a uh, birth yeah that would take care when uh, instantly at the early childhood of the yeah, yeah. the second okay. question is uh, how the to recharge glass enamel materials, materials. Huh? yes the yes second, second yes. question about the recharge to the glass enamel material is that right yes sir both yes, second yes, and third yes. questions are uh, com- you can combined recharge and uh, how the fluoride is released from the gic is there any other method of uh, fluoride recharge okay the fluoride discharge that mean that the glass enamel uh, you all know that the customer they have the fluoride in in in, in them in, in the composition also so when they when they um, uh, put it in in the restoration it will uh, release the fluoride and by at the same time they can recharge back when you use the fluoride toothpaste and the fluoride from the toothpaste or from the food or from something uh, in the, in the raw quality it can get back into the in the glass enamel so the customer can act uh, uh, react as a reservoir of the pura in the oral cavity and slowly release the pura and and recharge again and that that is what what in, in it happened also another is that, is that answering your question yes sir yes sir answer and after the sdf application in case of this smart uh, look can you add anything more it is answered sir uh, because uh, yeah no i think i can add little more because yes, uh, uh, normally when the fluoride 
fluoride is uh, present in the glass enema, it is not forever at the moment. So it has uh, many studies of Indian studies also have shown, uh, I would say Indian studies uh, discharge is different from the international dietary exposures because we have done a lot of dietary studies. And if you look at it carefully, the amount of fluoride discharges faster in Indian uh, studies than that of uh, international. I don't know whether somebody has observed this. So the recharge rate would be much more required because our Indian diet is more as having acidic uh, food in uh, capacity. And I'm sure the fluoride which is present in the glass enema superficial layers is uh, uh, discharging fast to combat the not only bacterial but also diet. Yes, entry. So there are some articles where uh, we need to see those type of studies which should be insight. That means I would say uh, like uh, how uh, Pratip said about fluoride application, uh, uh, the frequency may vary according to the dietary exposure is my view. Maybe we'll need to study that. Yeah. The, I think the next question, you can take it, Dr. Sukumar. That is uh, again on SDF application. SDF application. After SDF application, how long do you need to wait before restoring the cavity with GIC? That is related to smart uh, techniques. That is, uh, uh, this is a question which we also asked you, Pro Professor Pratip, that, uh, yes, yes, yes. yeah, like, you know, the same day, can we do the uh, SDF application and a glass enema on the same day, or should we wait for it to remineralize? Is the, what was my question, uh, as, uh, in the earlier also? On the same day, what, what do you mean on the same day, uh, uh, Professor Nanda? Uh, uh, same appointment. Means, yeah, like, you know, you apply the SDF, and yes. immediately can we apply the glass enema? That is yes, what yes, is the yes, yeah. Yes. That 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 what they are doing in, 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 in the US, they apply right away. When you are, okay. and you apply the SDF and then you, you wash it and then uh, for one minute and then you wash it and then you dry it, everything and then you put the glass enema on, on, on top of that. Right. On the same day, yes. Yeah. That means you don't need to wait for twenty four hours or forty eight hours before yes. Not like varnish. Not like varnish, I think. Uh, this was a common question because many people had uh, yes, many, many platforms it is being asked <laughs> because the, otherwise uh, doing it on a single sitting uh, uh, it would be uh, not possible yeah yes. but 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 for the for the sdf uh, person and down there are yeah. many countries they are not they're using only sdf without the without Even the filling, uh, uh, yes. adding the, the customer in thailand okay. we use only sdf and, and to, to paint it for a few months until it's be, it be harder and yeah. then we later come back to make a restoration again but as i told okay. you in usa they put sdf and uh, customer at the same time on the cavity cavity that lesions at the same yeah time. yeah i remember that discussion which you told last time yeah i agree with you on this both the views so th that means it is uh, in some most of the time sdf is uh, is the made as one of the uh, faster way of arresting uh, right, right. Yeah, compared to fluoride, which should take longer time. I think uh, there is a need of a study where, I think there was a study where fluoride varnish versus uh, uh, SDF, SDF is going on. Yeah, right, right. I think and that the, will give us the answer. The, the, and, and, and there are reports that SDF is better than, than fluoride varnish. There, there are some report already in the last few okay. years. Oh, right. yeah. uh, there's one more question, Dr. Sipkumari. I think you yes, can sir. take it. How long does the SDF last on the teeth after the application into the cavities? How long it will last? That is a question from Mohit. How long SDF will... Now you help me. How long? What is the question again? How long is the SDF? No, no. The... How long the SDF no, 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 lasts no. on the teeth? Once you apply it, how long it will be... I mean, it's the effects. Maybe he's talking about the effects. SDF, you mean? Effect of SDF on the cavitated lesion. Uh, How long? Once you apply, yeah, frequently. No, no. Normally, yeah. in in full life varnish, you can apply twice a year or four times a year. Uh, it depends uh, on, the, the, on the risk of, of the student. That's what it looks but like. But the for the SDF, be... normally they apply two times a year. Two times. That means six months. Six months. Yes. Yes. Okay. You have to. But but it depends. You know, in, in some people, if you apply only SDF. As you all know, the SDF can will will make the stain, the black stain on on the teeth, on the on, on the teeth, 
and then you can in in Australia they use the the color, but because if the color if the the black color the back stain fade down, that means it's time to re reapply again because the black color is the silver. Okay. So it's a silver that, 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 one, that on 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 the on the dentine that one. You can use that as an, an indicator as well. Okay, so we follow the same system, uh, yeah. unless some long-term study to show when it is re attack getting re recurrence of caries again. Right. I think after a single application or multiple application, we need to see whether the caries is progressing. Again, yeah. after every three months, needs to uh, such type of studies are required. I think right. at the moment, I don't think there is any reference on that after after application, long term yeah. effects without filling, without filling, yeah. non cavitated yeah. ones. And, and recall visits, they have to actually check the lesion whether it is hard or yeah. soft. If it is soft, they have to reapply again. Yeah. Again, there is a question how. To recharge the glass and materials. I think it's a repeat question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, is, it, it is a repeat question. Uh, they, you can either use fluorides. I think yes, uh, Dr. Pratip, uh, Professor Pratip has answered that. Yes, sir. Uh, there are some repeated questions again like this. Uh, recharging. It's a well-established fact. I think uh, Dr. Sivakumar would agree to that. Uh, as per, that many Indian studies have been done and shows that glass animals needs to be recharged. It's not time one time and do forget. So. I think we really need to start promoting and advising patients to under come for follow up, get a fluoride varnish done, and recharge and retain uh, the fillings. The one which that too we have done in a, a non-invasive way. Both I think we can conclude here. Uh, yeah. Self-applied yeah. and the professional applied both can help. Yes, yes. Self-applied, yeah. Identifies is always yes. and. Uh, the strong recommendation which has uh, come from this ECA is uh, compared to what uh, we normally used to talk about low fluoride toothpaste for children, uh, this mm. recent recommendation is still not being accepted so easily by people and the public that how to recommend. There was a time that we start, started changing from high fluoride to low fluoride uh, toothpaste, but now again we are telling them to use 1000 ppm. But I think it is looking at the carry state, I would agree. From my view, that even if it's a high risk is there, there's nothing else you can do. And uh, keeping the the white spots occurrences of high fluoride toothpaste, but still we need to do something because these are the kids who don't go for treatment. So it was not easy for us to understand how suddenly we go back to 1000 ppm from uh, what was 235 ppm uh, low fluoride toothpaste for very young children. Uh, uh, thank you for sharing the literature, Dr. Pro Professor Pratip. Uh, I'm sure these references would be an insight that the whole world is uh, now looking at uh, the new uh, way of looking at ECC and particularly the the uh, only not diagnosis but uh, the references and the what uh, the uh, view you and I have uh, uh, explained that we need to go for a treatment needs. How do we go about treatment needs was very highlighting. Thank you. I think we can conclude here, Dr. Shivkumar. Yes, sir. Because next speaker is... Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. I, will, okay. uh, uh, I will share the, uh, the, the PowerPoint and send it to you, Professor Nanda, sure. so that you can share with the other participants. That will be nice. Thank you yes. so much. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you from on behalf of ISPPD, Indian Society of Periodontics and Preventive Dentistry. On behalf of the President and uh, Secretary, we thank you for giving your, uh, you know, virtual session to reach all the most postgraduate students are hearing you here because those I mean some of them would come for the conference but here I think everybody is hearing most of the postgraduates who are free now but not exam going I'm sure they have benefited from your program thank you very much on behalf of ISPPD and JSS Dr. Nikhil Academy. is there you can uh... yeah Nikhil uh, would you like to say something I think he's uh, uh, no, no, I'm he's... here only okay. oh yeah please uh, Dr. Nikhil yeah <laughs> Thank you so much. Closing, closing remarks. Shiva Kumar was, uh, Dr. Pratip, it was a very, very nice combination of uh, the old and the new studies. And uh, I still remember that when I met Dr. Uh, uh, and I uh, in Mexico, uh, when he was finalizing these guidelines, I just requested that you have to include a couple of more things. Uh, one was uh, the 
the known fact that Escardovia vixi is another very known microorganism which can cause uh, ECC in the absence of Streptococcus mutans. Uh, a number of studies have already been published and uh, somehow now it was also, it is missed out now, the role of Escardovia vixi in the causation of uh, ECC. And then second thing, as uh, already Dr. Nandlal and Dr. Kumar mentioned about the uh, prenatal counseling. Uh, here also, again, um, uh, I requested Dr. Diranov that kindly include the prenatal counseling part also in this, the counseling for the mothers, particularly uh, uh, when the two, uh, when the taste buds are being developing, which is in the 12 months intrauterine. Now, the studies have shown when the mothers are uh, counseled not to take too much, too much sweets during the development of taste buds, uh, particularly towards the end of the first oh. trimester, uh, it has been seen that the children will not develop that sweet tooth uh, <laughs> and the caries incidence may be avoided. So that is also a part of prenatal counseling. Yeah. But yes, all postgraduates should know it. And then it's a, there is a scope for further studies on these particular measures. So uh, these are some of my inputs. No? Thank you so much once again, Dr. Pati, uh, Dr. Nandlal Sen and Dr. Siva Kumar. Thank you, Nikhil. Thank you, uh, thank you uh, Professor Pratip. Uh, so now I over to Paras to invite the next speaker. Thank you once again. Thank you, sir. So uh, now we have a second speaker for the day, Dr. Uh, uh, Ilaya Rajagopal. Dr. Ilaya is a board certified and diplomat in pediatric dentistry. He is the chief of dentistry department of surgery at Meritus Hospital, Hagerstown, MD, family healthcare of Hagerstown, Maryland, Fusion Dental, Skysville, Maryland, affiliated to University of Maryland Medical System and Hospital. Though he has got a lot of achievements and accolades to himself, but to mention a few, two time, he is a two-time winner of graduate table clinic presentation, AAPD, top pediatric dentist in Maryland for 2008, winner of Tamil American Pioneer Award for 2019 from FETNA Organization USA, Young Achiever in Pediatric Dentistry Award at World Dental Conference 2019, founder of Mobile, Mobile Dental, Dental Program, program Hathaway, Health in 2011, in the, the mobile, mobile, dental, mobile, mobile program, program is designed, designed to provide comprehensive dental care, including oral care, operative care, and sedation dentistry in an environment similar to that of stationary practice and visits 36 public schools in Washington County. His contribution towards extending oral health care to Washington County's most needy residents have been widely recognized by national media, such, such as Washington Post, Post and Herald, and Herald Mail. Mail. His work is regularly cited in the news media, media and have been, been interviewed in on local TV and radio networks and by the Child Guide magazine, which is circulated in several countries in the tri-state area. Now, I invite Dr. Ilaya Rajagopal to take over. Uh, uh, Smoke, can you allow uh, Ilaya to share the slide screen? He can do it, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, welcome, Ilya. Yeah, Raj Gopal, uh, thank you for accepting and uh, we look forward to a wonderful session. What's happening in USA? Yeah, Navigation. Thank yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Dr. Nandala. It was a conversation uh, and uh, it's great to see you all virtually here. And uh, well, first, let me thank uh, Dr. Donorov, uh, he's here, uh, Dr. Srivatsava, Dr. Nuvulu. Dr. Manjunath, Dr. Paras, and uh, Dr. Bharadwaj. Thank you all so much. Um, and I think it was Dr. Dr. Paras or Dr. Nuvulu, I think they had mentioned about the, uh, the number of attendees. So as the number of attendees went up, my heart rate also went up. So, uh, and then my wife, uh, she got me some spiked up uh, Indian masala tea. So I think I had a few more sips of that. And, uh, but anyway, if I'm going too fast, um, please let me know and I can slow down. So uh, first, I'd also like to thank Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Pati. Um, he had a, a beautiful presentation. He had a very good uh, slide on prevalence and, and uh, he was talking about uh, the early childhood theories and 
citing Dr. Turnoff's article, and I think uh, Dr. Paras also mentioned about uh, meeting Dr. Turnoff, is uh, this whom I also got trained under, and he's a very good friend of mine. And uh, just to let you know that if you have to have him for any of the webinars, I'm sure he will be delighted to do that. And uh, anyway, uh, without further delay, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, start our presentation. I hope uh, you okay. all. Really? Yeah, we can see your slide. Yeah, we can see you and slide. Yeah. So as my topic is, uh, of course, navigating the pandemic. Uh, without further delay, I'm going to um, address the elephant in the room, which is the COVID-19. And that's the current status. Uh, we have hit like two big landmarks numbers, which is 10 million cases and over 500 deaths. And and I think soon enough, everybody is going to know somebody who has already, uh, uh, you know, uh, lost a member or somebody that they know. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a grim situation, but uh, even Dr. Pochi had mentioned that it's going to be spiking to like 100,000 uh, cases in the U.S. And when I see the numbers in India, that's uh, pretty alarming as well. So... Um, this is one of the first patients that happened in Washington County. We live in Maryland, it's in a city called Hagerstown, which is an hour north of Washington, DC. So when I saw this picture uh, on the, on the uh, newspaper, right, I told myself, hey, I know this girl, because she is my patient. And this is the first COVID death uh, in our county. And I have cared her for the last 10 years. She's a beautiful girl, but uh, she does have, as you can see, she's medically compromised. She had a lot of comorbidities. So people with comorbidities don't have much of a chance uh, in this pandemic. So, uh, you know, uh, that, that's kind of what we are facing right now. <clears throat> so Governor Hogan, um, he announced that, you know, we are going to close down for uh, all the uh, elective procedures. And that happened in March for us. And so we were kind of wondering as how we are going to do. So I have, I work in two practices. One is the uh, Fusion Dental, which is a private practice. And the other one is the Family Health Care of Hagerstown. It is a, 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 a federally qualified health center, uh, which means it receives some federal funding. And it's kind of a safety net uh, practice for a lot of the uh, underserved kids. So they kind of, uh, we knew that there's going to be a lot of uh, patients and, you know, who would need care. So my immediate thought was, you know, that's why I put this A. So these are the things that we're going to deal with. Uh, how are we going to deal with? Because everything is going to be shut off. So antibiotics, analgesics, and atomatic restorative treatment. This is what I think the three A's that you have to remember. And I think that when I was talking to Dr. Nandala yesterday, I, I believe that uh, the offices have not been opened and it still have restrictions for uh, aerosolized uh, procedures in India and all the elective surgeries. So, um, of course, antibiotics for any infection that you have to treat in N6. And then, and Dr. Pratipa also mentioned about the atraumatic restorative treatment. Um, so, these are how we have to go about for when, when the when uh, when you're still not open for the full business. And of course, the SDF, I know people had a lot of uh, questions on SDF. So how we do the SDF as I do, as we do come and we um, apply the, uh, the thing on the lesion, we have the forms right there, the consent form, because you know it's gonna darken up the teeth. It's, it's aesthetically not pleasing, and especially on the front teeth, people are not really uh, fond of having something like that uh, done to their child. And uh, we also do like a one-step procedure because people don't want to leave work. And uh, so we pretty much try to accommodate uh, what we can do to, um, to save them another visit. So we do, um, on the first visit, we just apply. And then as Dr. Pati mentioned, we add right. And if you have to put some, uh, some glass on number, you can go ahead and do it. But it's not necessary because the parents already know that it's going to be aesthetically uh, compromised. But 
That's the whole point. The whole point is you're trying to slow the progression of cavity so that you can buy some time so you can restore it at a later time. So you can also, what I have typically done is make them come back in three weeks just to apply, reapply again sometimes. And then we evaluate every three months. But by the time, uh, either the patient is okay with that or we just take them and follow through, usually for cases that we do or uh, people who are waiting to get into uh, the uh, operating room. So sometimes we have a wait list. We have, like now we have a wait list of three months, but uh, sometimes it can go ahead um, uh, based on the volume of patients. Just before the COVID, we were, I was thinking and I was looking at my schedule and it was uh, going into, the, into June. So, uh, so we had to make a decision. And what we decided is we will be open for one day a week and, and address the patient's needs. Uh, because within the week of closing, the ER called up and they said that we don't want them to have any uh, dental emergencies uh, show up in the uh, ER. So they started uh, referring the patients back to us. So, uh, so that's what we, we, uh, we did. And still we're caring for the uh, emergency, for the traumas, anything, or facial infections and uh, then we used our uh, protocol of having the antibiotics and the analgesics. So teledentistry is another thing uh, we used a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, FaceTime, of course, uh, live video that you can do. Well, even before that, you know, for a long time, I used to tell my patients to just send me over the pictures of, you know, suddenly they would say, oh, you know, you fell off from the trampoline or they had uh, their swimming and they bumped into each other and then, uh, you know, one of any traumas, and before I make a choice to go into the office, then I would say, you know, send me the picture, and uh, we just have a conversation on the phone uh, to see what needs uh, my presence there, or something that we can wait until the next day, or, or when the office opens back up. And so, teledentistry is is good. Uh, we have the codes for that. We build the uh, insurance for those codes. And uh, one thing is you have to make sure that you inform the parents that you are doing a lot of FaceTime. I mean, sometimes they do it. And they, that you're recording the conversation or you're at least taking a screenshot of the conversation because that's how the insurance is not going to know that we have done such a type of uh, service and that you document in the chart. So for that purpose, you have to uh, inform them. Without that, you, you, you just cannot, um, uh, it's just kind of a concern and just covering, covering up yourself. So as you can see, in had office uh, calls and uh, you know, those other text messages are sent. And oh. most of these would be uh, coming down from you know, different dates, you know, from April or March, it started from everything. And, and, uh, you know, uh, anything at all, you know, that was the time that we had to go at this, you know, a simple discoloration to, you know, uh, to just a small little cavity that people were kind of clueless and they were not sure as, you know, when the office is going to open and you know, when the kids start uh, playing with pain, then it's going to be, um, you know, uh, we have a responsibility. Uh, they have pain and suffering, so we have we have a uh, moral and ethical responsibility to attend to that. We can say we can cite the pandemic, but at the same time we have to see what uh, we have to do in order to take care of them. So uh, the person in the front, I mean, that was one of the first patients that I saw him on I think March 27, and you can see uh, the the patient with the braces. So he uh, had a whole cyst uh, front to the thing number eight, uh, and uh, the mom frantically called up, and we had him go to the ER uh, because they were right all around there. So I spoke to the ER doctor, and then we they had them reimplanted, um, and and luckily the orthodontist I called him because he was on braces. I just called up the orthodontist and I say, hey, you know, uh, can you go ahead and just get that uh, splinted on? Uh, so I can avoid the visit to come back to the uh, thing, and he was kind enough to do that. So, and then I kind of knew, you know, from then on, as you know, what we're looking at because um, 
how the evolve resource worked is we've kind of furloughed all the dental assistants. So it was just the doctors who were there. So we called up, uh, there were other general dentists. So we called up each other. So if we have to do uh, any procedure, then uh, we help each other do it. Just for the first two weeks and after that, then you kind of figured out that it's not gonna work for long. So we got one of the assistants back. So, uh, how we start doing it is, you know, we, the protocol is, you know, once you go, uh, once we go into the office, we take it uh, temp uh, temperature and you can see that it's mentioned. Uh, so uh, we have everybody screened, uh, the employees screened. Uh, of course, uh, the employees come into the office, so uh, we take the temperature and then we have to fill a questionnaire. And uh, just so that we, we check off uh, that we are okay to be treating the patients at that time. And there again, these are all legal issues uh, because, you know, from contact tracing, then they can find out, okay, if this person was somebody, is it okay for them to come into the office or so? So those are the things that you want to make sure that you have documented. And on the, on the right side, we usually flow with all the names and uh, for, uh, for uh, known reasons, I didn't want to put all the names there. So. But that's kind of the form that we use. So once we get everything ready, uh, we, ask, uh, we ask the patients to come like, you know, 15 minutes ahead of time and then wait in their cars and just give us a call or a text uh, to inform that they are here. And then you get suited up. And that's the office on the left side, on the right side. So, uh, uh, you know, I've got all my PPEs. I got my face mask, my the N95s, the face shield and my head cover. So I'm all set, I'm all ready to go. Once everything is ready, then the assistant uh, follows her protocol. And nothing much in the OR. Um, you know, the OR was one place that I felt like you know, everything was all the same. We didn't have to do much, but uh, they still, you know, um, wanted me to do something. Uh, so I said, you know, let's get the PPU for the bears. So we got to make some, some uh, uh, changes uh, to how we are doing things. So, but uh, or was pretty much everything the same. We didn't have to do anything, anything different. So, uh, which is which was, which was good. The only thing is what uh, was is, is we asked the patient to be tested for COVID. So, just the day before, we have the COVID testing done for all the patients undergoing surgery, and uh, I'm hoping that soon that we would be. Uh, having the rapid test that we could do it uh, just um, before because you could still um, not sure if the patient have been in contact with somebody else after having the test done. So this is how the patients, they come into the office, you can see on the top left, uh, they come out of the car, they wait, and then we, uh, and they, that's good. And then the kids uh, start coming out of the masks. This one good thing is, you know, I was kind of afraid this. Wondering, you know, if people generally, they don't want to be us in the white coats, uh, as you know. Um, and once you put the mask on and some other kids have the anxiety of seeing somebody with the mask, but I was thinking that's going to get worse. But uh, uh, the good news is, you know, most of the kids, they think this is a new normal because all the young kids, they're coming in, uh, you know, they already have the mask or they see their parents and think that's, that's a normal. If you only have the mask, then they get afraid. So, uh, so the assistant comes in and you can see on the right screen, they take the temperature and there's a small waiting area um, before you actually come into the office. And you can see the office is all blue taped, the chairs are all taped and you have the, uh, the place where people have to be standing, they have to give like, you know, I think they put it 10 feet apart. And, uh, and you can see on the front desk staff uh, all having the masks. So, this is not a typical uh, um, office. Usually, people you know um, have and it's very, quite busy. But uh, this is how we are doing right now. Even the play area has been sealed, so we don't the patient, patients pretty much uh, are on the iPads or things that they are the working on, or the pads working in their car. Um, and then when the time is ready, they start coming at the office. This is something that we have it on our website. It's on Fusion Dental, and you know, it kind of uh, lists out the things 
for the parents so before they come into the office they know uh, how it's going to be and you know what is our protocol for disinfection and it's on the website so coming to an important question is about you know uh, i was talking to dr nandala yesterday about how we decide on um, patients and you know whom to treat and you know who takes a priority and we were working through the pandemic so i can share you some experiences so for the first two i mean i, I think for the first one month uh, we pretty much followed the three a's and uh, we didn't do anything very much so we didn't use any mechanical tools you know, tools and i mean we just use those things just not any electronic uh, electrical tools uh, the, the, um, the high speed hand pieces anything that is going to aerosolize the room so uh, we just basically did that but then then you have a patient uh, like this and you are left with no choice so this is this patient uh, was called um uh under the office and one of the pediatricians actually referred this and they had mentioned to me about uh like five or six months ahead um and they were telling me telling me about this patient that you know uh that uh he's got a lot of severe um cavities early childhood cases he's four year old and so i asked them to come into the office but apparently they um kind of dropped the ball the parents uh, because he had other issues so nephrotic syndrome and he is a patient with asthma as well and i think he has good as well as having the famotidine so this patient walks up and um they called and uh, they have been put on cyclophosphamide which is a chemotherapy so before any chemotherapy then the protocol is you know we normally go ahead and get everything uh the restorative treatment done uh for known reasons but um in this case it was april 18 in the middle of the pandemic and they had stopped but the patient already experienced uh, severe pain and swelling and um, and that's when they uh, they they called up so i asked them to send the blood report uh, because you know the the numbers are going to be low uh, so i kind of uh, took a look at it and as you can see that there and the things that i'm concerned about is the platelet count and the absolute need of proof count so both were uh, promising and you can see that the values were uh, you know uh, 212k and absolute need of proof were uh, about about the, the number of 2000 so i was confident and i was comfortable that uh, that the patient can be uh, treated so this was the thing that we had a phone conversation and i asked them but Here's the thing the patient was coming from Philadelphia so it was quite a distance so it was like two and a half hours away now that they were not able to find anybody it was just that they had called offices and they were closed and apparently were um uh, they they just got off a hold of us and then they uh, the pediatrician had mentioned uh, about uh, this patient so all these numbers uh were good so we went ahead so uh since i was the chief of the um and the chief of the uh oh i uh had to make a decision whether the patient is going to be treated in the office or it should be taken them into the or uh, you know given he is four year old and with multiple needs so uh, let me show you the the panorex he was not um all the cooperative for a bite wing so we decided to take an extra oral radiograph and we decided to go uh do the panorex instead and that's what we've been doing uh we take the the pan bite wings if patients cannot handle the the bite wings uh, intraorally the reason also is you don't want them to cough as i said you know the children can be silent carriers of the covid so it's okay to take the pan or be able to get a pan bite wing and you can see tooth number um uh, l uh, had the lesion a large lesion is already not restorable and that's where the abscess stemmed out of and uh and k was also into the into the pulp and c number b all all completely decayed so yeah but the whole mouth of work to be done so the first appointment that's that's what we did and we uh, did have a polymer and put the stainless steel down and we extracted uh, tooth number 
you know, so it was done under nitrous oxide. So he did great. So it was a good thing. So we didn't have any issues. So I didn't have to take him into the OR. And that's something that you have to decide um, as a league because we have to um, inform the chief of surgery. And, you know, because the hospital is also running out of PPE, you don't want to burn through the PPE for uh, for a dental patient, uh, if it's elective, and there's nothing that we have to do that is going to be emergent, but uh, definitely not in this scenario. I was prepared for it, but fortunately, we were able to handle them on the chair. So this is the mobile uh, dental unit. Um, as I said, um, it wouldn't do any justice if I uh, just worked on it for 10 years and if I am going to talk about it just in one slide. So we'll keep that as for another uh, day, another time. But um, it's a nice program. Uh, we started in 2011 and uh, you can see me, this was a picture that uh, I just took it um, yesterday. So that's why we have all those uh, years on, uh, pretty much if you if not, then I don't have my, uh, if I don't have the face sheet. So, um, as I said, you know, we visit 36 different schools and uh, we have, uh, it's very encouraging and uh, initially we had a little um, hurdle, but then the school started recognizing the efforts and, uh, and it's a good thing as, you know, the patient does not, does not have to drive up. Right now, what we're trying to do is park next to the, the school. Uh, uh, parking lots have agreed uh, so that, you know, it's just like for people who can come in and get their work done, they will still um, uh, can avail the services. So uh, it's just a very, very busy practice and we have two mobile units um, and we have dental dentists who go out and take care and then they refer the patients back to me if they need any advanced care. So the challenges are faced, uh, you know, it's not an easy task just to, you know, wear those PPE and that's, you know, I've seen videos on, on WhatsApp and uh, other media when people, um, you know, uh, sweat and face those things. I, I have to say, I, I, we also do the same thing. I mean, I, I kind of face the same way because you're wearing the N95 all the time. I kind of, especially after the OR or if you're doing for a long time, then you're soon sucking up a lot of uh, carbon you're rebreathing the air. So that's one thing that's why you have, you know, you, you kind of fatigue at the end of the day. And, you know, you still have a little bit of a headache and sometimes a little bit of an exhaustion. And uh, the one thing after the OI recognized was the intercostal muscles started aching because I had two patients that day and uh, I did not remove my N95 for a good uh, five hours. So I said to myself that probably may not be the right idea to do that. So also, you know, there was increased heart rate and difficult breathing. Uh, this was all in the initial part. And now, you know, uh, started to overcome a few things. And I'm going to talk to you just briefly about, you know, what you can do to do that. And I also was reading about the article uh, just a couple of days about, you know, the mental health. You know, people, um, you know, by the... Uh, latest by the Kaiser for Family Foundation they had um, mentioned about about people population of the adults negatively impacted you know they all are having a little bit of stress everybody I am I'm sure that everybody's going through a little bit of a stress you know to see if uh, you know how and when and especially I had this doubt and I had this a lot of fear on the first week or the second week and we were touching these patients and you know if you're going to get sick you know what's going to happen to a family member or, you know, if you will be ever be able to work, or is it going to be safe? Of course, the financial concerns, um, you know, as a business owner, there's going to be a lot of those things. And especially, um, you know, not, not knowing as when everything is going to go back up. So it's going to have a lot of impact, a lot of uh, stress on the mind. But uh, that's the nature of the beast. And we need to know that. And we have to see as how we can tackle that. So in May... Uh, the UN stated that, you know, it's got the seeds of a major mental health crisis. So we certainly have to do something to see how we can offset. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of funny videos on the WhatsApp and I look at it and I laugh at it and I say, okay, you know, 
it could be me or you know just you know take it easy there's nothing anything that's just gonna do to change the situation so but uh now that we are back um we're not so sure if the cases start spiking there's gonna be again that uh, we may be presenting in another situation where we may get back pull back some of the elective care and go back into just doing the emergency uh, uh treatment uh, there is no uh, much of an idea so it just really depends on how people uh maintain social distancing and uh, maintain their part and their civic duty in this whole pandemic so um you still have to see how it's going to be all uh, so stop getting anxious and uh, we should uh, not shut down and uh, uh that's that, you know we should uh, have a resolve and say that we all in together so uh we have to take control of the situation. So I was doing a lot of aerobic exercise. I do a lot of running, and uh, which I started doing a little bit more. I can see me with the bike. I love biking, and my daughter joins me. Uh, I got a ten-year-old and a seven-year-old, so both have started uh, biking these days. And uh, my wife also joins me. So uh, one thing I realized is it controls your heart rate and uh, increases your lung capacity. You know, uh, definitely any of the aerobic exercise. I mean, swimming if you're able to. I mean, have um, uh, if an opportunity presents itself, uh, you should be able to do that. And, uh, and any of those things will, um, you know, helps, helps. And I've, I've seen, I've seen the change myself in the last couple of months. And, um, and now I don't realize that I'm actually wearing a 95 or, you know, working behind the picture that happens after like one or two months. So, and the heart rate also goes low. Um, so that all, all helps. And of course, for you know, uh, controls your mood swings and you know, kind of helps you energize, refocus. So I did my part of social distancing, and of course, social media distancing, as I like to call it. I just shut off, and then you know, some of my friends blame on me. I don't know if some of them are already watching these, but um, but that's what I did. You know, um, uh, you know stop uh, seeing all the videos on COVID, so get the anxiety, uh, shoot it off. Uh, so uh, I took, and you know, you got to save some time for you. So this is the time for reflection. And you have to say that this, you know, of course we are kind of really in a materialistic world, in a capitalistic world. So uh, we have to realize that this is, uh, this is all something that we can um, keep aside and uh, make time for us and for our family. And as I said, we're all going to be Zoomers. And I just took it as a, as a, so one time, you know, I was looking at two webinars on two computers. So uh, you know, at the same time, trying to find out information as much as I can. But then I realized that was too much. So I stopped doing those things. And my children, they stopped their, uh, the school started, I mean, they closed down in June. They still don't have. Uh, I think it's still uh, the it's uh, it's all up in the air right now. Uh, nobody has any uh, clear ideas, you know, how we are going to go back and whether we're going to go just to online classes. I believe I talked to some of my friends uh, in India, and they were mentioning that they are doing online courses right now. And I'm thinking, unless the vaccine comes out, I think people are going to be a little reluctant to send their kids. And a lot of people do homeschooling here. So uh, we have to wait and see. It's all the waiting game and uh, things change. I mean, as I said, in every, it changes by the day. So a lot of these regulations, so uh, we have to keep ourselves updated a little bit on those. And, uh, you know, it's best to have some work-life balance, as I was saying. We still uh, do a part of the exercise and I, we started flying kites. You know, I miss those days when I went to the uh, Marina Beach and uh, did my kite. I mean, this is the first time I have uh, flown a kite uh, in the US. It took a little while for that to, to climb up, uh, but we got it up and going and that was, uh, that was something that was good. And in our community, we have a band, uh, you know, they just go about uh, just playing songs to do that, yeah. every Saturday that we used to do. Uh, so it was just my kids, so you can see the background. And um, you know, uh, this was, I think, taken last week when we were just playing some songs. And finally, they have um, they have the song um, 
they have uh, made a recital on this song. There's a Hindi song, and they like it, and uh, uh, it, it's 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 fun. So this is how we are spending our time on the off days. Here's what happened yesterday, and I was talking to Dr. Dr. Mandala. I got tested for COVID, and this was through contact tracing. My dental assistant was exposed to one of her niece, and her husband was tested positive. So the whole office went through the testing, and uh, it's not a fun test. And it's uh, kind of the same picture. That's exactly as I just got this picture from the internet. And uh, same thing. They asked me to lean down, and then uh, so quick swab. But I uh, just kind of go, go ahead and, say, and I just kind of it feels like it tickles your brain. So um, uh, so do your part in social distancing and wear a mask. And they, and I'm still there's a lot of states that don't and uh, a few states. Uh, and uh, but I think it's just getting mandated in most of the places um, to wear a mask when you are in public uh, setting. So I love the Avengers and, you know, I am wondering where they are, but, you know, we are the real Avengers, the healthcare workers, the first responders. So thanks to everybody who's out there <coughs> listening and, you know, taking care and uh, to all the physicians, all the uh, our friends in the, in the medical fraternity and uh, the, all the healthcare facility. So, and I, uh, you know, they're doing their best to do, and the professors and the scientists, everybody who are responding to these uh, situations. And um, also my wife is a nephrologist, so she goes back and forth, she oh. patients every day. Um, so we have our stories, but uh, um, it's it's a tough uh, uh, thing, but I think as I said, you know, we're all this together, so uh, let's see how we, uh, help each other and educate each other and so we can care for our patients together. Thank you. Yeah. Well, that's my wife and my family. Let me get off the screen. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh, was that was interesting. Uh, a real, uh, you know, you're showing the real time, uh, your experience, very few I would like to go this way. Uh, uh, there are, I think it was very relaxing, I would say, because we really think about, talk about only what we should do and uh, you know how to deal with the patient. But this is very important what you try to stress is beside patient, uh, what we should do to ourselves. We need to stress management of our own is also a very, very important thing. And uh, I'm sure everybody's talking about uh, uh, mental status, uh, stress, level evaluation of every other field. But we dentists, uh, you know, as uh, a specialist and particularly as a pediatric dentist, I would like to say uh, there is a con little, okay, treating children would be safer. Let us start treating is one of the questions. So th I think that's one of my question also still. Uh, I mean, but I, I always said, see, be careful. There's a parent along with it. So these are a little bit unexplained situations. Would treating kids would be safe enough? Uh, like, you know, they are not already, uh, though there was initially, there was a statement that uh, uh, kids are not getting uh, COVID, but now of late, we can see the different age groups getting affected, uh, even young children as well. So it was wonderful, but uh, you made an uh, opening very well. Everybody was in India also doing some, uh, besides uh, uh, lockdown and uh, uh, professional stress, being involved in academics and online training. Still, we were active. Most of the institutions in India, uh, we took it as a challenge. I would say, uh, can we go online? Can we really go online? Can India meet the online education system? I'm sure uh, uh, most of us, uh, the panelists, would agree, uh, including our uh, DCI member, Dr. Nikhil that we made it, we made it, we made our, kept ourselves busy throughout this three months in academics, uh, delivering seminars and lectures. I, I think that was, we were preoccupied of routine then. I, I don't know whether we really felt the stress or on one side, but we bothered that we kept engaged ourselves in kind of webinars and lectures, uh, delivering 
thing to the student. Besides, as you said, you kept, I mean, we also were searching. And yes, that was quite a messy thing. Uh, <laughs> confusing. You don't know what and where. I'm sure Silkumar would uh, like to uh, say a few things before we take up the questions. Uh, over to Silkumar. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Tila. It was a nice uh, experience shared. And um, I like the closing remarks. Like uh, the Corona has given us a chance to reset uh, uh, our lives and uh, uh, look uh, like uh, introspect into what we are going through till now and uh, what uh, better the things we can do. Uh, and definitely, uh, like a lot of people, it, it gave a chance to uh, relook into their personal lives and uh, what they were missing. And definitely, because uh, when we, uh, I was going through the news channels also, many people were there, they were thinking, even uh, not the professionals, even housewives, uh, they were sharing their views that uh, we are together now. That togetherness has come, come in, definitely. And uh, as you said, um, we have to take care of uh, ourselves, keeping us busy, physically active, as well as uh, uh, taking care of our uh, loved ones and everybody. And as uh, Dr. Nandral said, uh, we're all uh, actually occupied with other things also, how to go about uh, the online classes, which are who are there in academics, and not purely in practice. Uh, so we were actually kept ourselves busy in uh, organizing uh, online classes, online exams, even online seminars or journal clubs, right? We've been uh, forget yeah. about the guest lectures from international faculty uh, from different countries, all, the, all those things. Yeah. Uh, so Dr. Danu would like to say something, our president would like to add something, doctor, before we take the questions. Uh, our president, uh, Dr. Danu. Hello. Yeah, yeah, we can hear you, Dr. Dhan. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was a very good uh, webinar and uh, well, very, very nice presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, very, very relaxing. And, and real facts. Uh, I think uh, everybody, yeah, real facts and everybody, I think, enjoyed and uh, it will be very useful for all of them since it's uh, uh, one of the two of the international speakers. Uh, uh, every time listening to our speakers, so sometimes it is a change for all of we us. We should know what is happening in other places also. What is happening in other places also, yes. Thanks for organizing. For I congratulate uh, uh, Kill, JSS would, Dental yeah. College as well as uh, Dr. Nandral, sir. As well as uh, our uh, ISPPD hero, uh, Shyokumar, sir. Uh, thanks, That's why he's here. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dr. Nikhil, would you like to say something, Dr. Uh, very nice presentation from both of you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, thank you, Dr. Dano. Uh, uh, thank you, sir. <clears throat> I think everyone has spoken uh, everything good about these uh, uh, webinars. Uh, and as you are, uh, you have rightly said that uh, these uh, this lockdown period has given us a lot of things. And one of the very important thing is to learn the online teaching learning process. Um, um, I, I don't know about uh, others, but in India, many of our academicians, particularly in, towards the senior group, know, uh, we had very little exposure as far as online teaching and learning process was mm -hmm. concerned. But this is this particular lockdown period of almost three months uh, gave us the opportunity to learn this online teaching learning. And so that was a really a very uh, important thing. And as Dr. Ilaya Raja said, that the mental health is also very important. Uh, I have little idea about the, what's happening in US, but in India, the people have a lot of concern, particularly the dental fraternity, uh, uh, about the job security and then how the practice will go after Corona or post COVID. Uh, what will be the new norms uh, which are going to be set by the apex bodies and then government of India. So people are a little anxious also. So at this moment of time, you know, the mental health is also very important. And you rightly said, and you pointed out one very which I really liked it that social along with the social distancing, social media distancing. This, this is very important, I think. If we just shut off for some time these social media interaction, I think our mental health is going to be the normal one. So I would say, man, some of the you know you just tell them, uh, you know, if they are wearing the mask, you know, tell them hey, it's a good mask or uh, usually they come out with some some characters on them, or you can draw your own characters. So, and one thing I've, um, you know, talking to some of my uh, friends and, um, uh, you know, who's, uh, who, uh, you know, was their dentist and they, that's what they said. 
they feel like really safe going to the dentist because we've always, uh, you know, used our protective wear, right? I mean, we use our, we use our mask, we have our shoes. I mean, pretty much all I like to wear. So then uh, for, you know, the general public knows that uh, the dental offices uh, will lower, you know, follow the protocol. We have a good infection control protocol. So I feel like, you know, so that's a good thing that we have, we have kept and we have to thank our, uh, you know, professors and, you know, people who have, you know, maintain the standoff level of infection control. So, uh, so the, yeah, so I hope that helps. Yeah, I have a question uh, here from my side. For this. Sorry, yes, using a protective wear for the kid also, like any other extra. Uh, oh, you know, if uh, if you have seen one of my the picture that I had on the on the unit, I. The patient has an eyewear, you know, we give disposable uh, glasses, it comes as disposable. Previously used to have eye protection is always a must. Um, and they all put their masks on the chair until we are ready to uh, start with the procedure. Okay. So, and they don't have any other uh, things, but uh, yes, uh, that one, and of course we have the patient bed. So beyond that, um, there's hardly anything that we can uh, or advocate because of course you're working in the mouth so that's where all the wood why is it going to be shedding uh, either the lungs or your throat but that's the nature of our job so i think we we dentists and anesthetists and uh, ent's and uh, you know we all have to be uh, extremely careful uh, seeing the patient at this time okay before nandalal sir uh, takes, uh, takes over i'll ask one more question that is uh, what is the acceptance uh, of patients when you wear the PPE, especially yeah. maybe children. Yeah. Uh, yes, as I said, you know, it's, it's encouraging people accept, uh, you know, they, they like us doing everything. So I don't, I don't see a change. Of course, as I said, this is not the time for us to lower our guard. So yeah. wear your PPE. And uh, I think that's the best thing that you can um, do for yourself or the other healthcare personnel working along with you, your dental assistants, and uh, for the patient as well. Thank you. Uh, sir, Nandalal, sir, you can take Yeah, it. yeah. So I will, uh, there is a, just a, 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 for out of interest, uh, uh, what do you think, like, uh, I mean, uh, is it uh, now good to allow the parent or the caretaker to accompany the child inside the, or particularly the operating period, or we just keep a, again keep them out, uh, provided there is a good vision from the sitting area to the operating area. Uh, what would what I think? I mean, though we know that uh, children uh, about six years they will walk into the operatory, but in Indian scenario they don't. They expect the parent to be there, and the parent wants to be there inside the operatory all the time. Even if we that philosophy of uh, uh, waiting outside and the kid going in, so. Uh, what is the scenario there right now because of the COVID situation right now? We cannot allow the parent inside. It was my view. Uh, we should have some place where the parent is away because we are not only, if at all, there is an aerosol spread. We are not only causing a problem to one person, but also to the next one who is accompanying. So how do you, I mean, what do you, what is the practice? Uh, I don't know over there or should we keep the, uh, the second person inside from the, you know, that's a one big question here we are having at the moment, particularly in child patient, because in India, we have, children don't come alone into the operatory area. Parent wants to be inside the operatory, even up to 12 years, 13 years, 18 years. Yes, I think uh, it's just the comfort level. So how we do, this is before and as well. And nothing much has changed now. So I allow the parents, some of the parents, if they want to really come, you know, some of the parents are going to say, hey, you know, Akash, we know you, uh, you know, go ahead. <laughs> they, they, you know, once you have built the trust, then they're okay with that. And okay. They, um, uh, that they don't come back into the room. They just, they, they, and now especially, they're all busy, so they're all doing the online work, so they don't even uh, bother to come inside the office. They stay in the, stay in the they car. They stay outside. They do, they send the kids and 
as I said, you know, some of those kids we have started, I mean, the ones that you have started early from right from one year of age. They know you. They, they know you. They love coming into the office. They enjoy. And that's a very good thing. And this is the time I think, you know, you can have, you know, have your dental assistants also trained in some of the behavior management. And, you know, that's the time that, you know, you tell them. And a lot of different things that we can, uh, we can come, you know, you're, my dad, uh, he practices and, um, uh, and, you know, I always tell him, you know, I have this one dental assistant that's going to be All there. The time. Like, they either work. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that concept has come now in India. You always have an assistant along with you. You don't work alone. But uh, the concept of parent waiting outside, it's uh, not adopted by, you know, by all, uh, re- yeah. I mean, groups, yeah. religious, yeah. religion. Yeah. So unless we create a glass view and the parent watches, uh, so most of our, yeah, a glass view and he stays there. So most of them, they have to readopt for child management. There should be another sit out, which is having a glass view to view. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, I, I I thought I would uh, recommend that for our country. Uh, They can still see the children and, uh, Yes. They want to visualize what is going on. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I'll leave the parent to come into the room because I can very well say, hey, look after your child. Yeah. You know, and then, you know, sometimes it's not an easy thing. I mean, we know how we work in small spaces and how we build, you know, you, we take, we, we imbibe their anxiety and it's all unto us because we cannot have an anxious space when you're dealing with the children. So... You know, sometimes they have to recognize that, you know, the level of work that we try to do and it's hard to control some of the behavior. So you might as well uh, leave. But as I said, you know, this is not the situation to, to experiment as a few things if you have not done those before. Uh, but before. But uh, as I said, by the comfort, if the kid, because finally the kids, you know, um, they are dependent on the parents. And if they want the parent, and if you want to deliver the care, if that is a situation that helps you do that, then it makes more sense to have the parent in the room. If not, uh, however the kid feels comfortable, that's how I think I would take, uh, uh, take that to answer that question. Yeah. So if the parents are willing and they want to stay out well and good, we don't have so many people inside the room. So, but if the kid feels and if yeah. the parent... I don't, yeah. yeah, correct. It's left to case by case. Perfect. Yeah, but we need to keep a direct vision or maybe we can even fix a kind of a video a cam, cam which is connected to a TV outside and, you know, they can watch that. I mean, we are trying to adopt that system as well here. Uh, particularly, you know, he can see what's happening. If they have a closed doors, there's no glass view. What would be the model of a dental clinic? And when there is a glass view and that's uh, okay. So I think uh, compared to the conventional way of allowing the parent in, what would be the modification of the dental clinic required for child management? You know, and I liked your uh, your the dolls dressed up uh, with a mask, and uh, it's a great idea. Thanks for that. Yeah, yeah, thank you. And the other thing, as I said, you know, the kids, every, everybody uh, have a phone right now these days, correct? So. They can very well FaceTime, and if you have a stand for the FaceTime, just uh, put it in the office. Say the parent, you know, you don't have to. Uh, the, uh, the other patients don't have to uh, view what's going on. If you're comfortable with that, you can just FaceTime. But we generally don't allow people uh, coming and recording us because you know you know what's going to happen next. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, not recording. Only visualizing on the TV screen. You know, uh, video cam kind of thing. Yeah. So they then post it. You know, they see it fun and as. Oh, they- yeah, yeah. That's uh, crazy. <laughs> ah, that's not allowed? No, we, we don't allow. We don't allow yeah. recording. recording. You know, sometimes, you know, they want to use that picture or the video for their later on for their graduation as their first visit. So we allow one or two pictures and, you know, taking those. Yeah, things. snapshots. Snapshots are okay. Yeah, absolutely not recording any uh, videos. Full, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes if I have to have it for the meetings, then I would take the consent. And uh, you would do that. If not, then I don't gen- generally do that. I encourage and I tell parents to keep their phones down uh, because you don't want to distract. Oh. Or I, even if they're in the room, that's 
uh, that it's just me and the kid going to have the conversation. And uh, so it's just me. The, 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 you know, most of the time, the dental assistant does the talking. She gets the kids calm down, and then I fill in the, the conversations that we have. But the parents are not supposed to be uh, you know, interfering. Having a conversation in the room. Yeah, exactly. yeah. I think uh, they're going to give us about okay, this is coming, that is coming, and yeah, we're going to get the food pull out, but it doesn't want to do any of those things. Uh, there is a very big question now. <laughs> uh, uh, the prevalence of COVID recurrence. W w is there any any mention anywhere about that? Recurrence. Re Recurrence. Right. I think you it's know. A, it's a difficult question. <laughs> I'm not uh, an infectious disease expert, but uh, from all the uh, articles that uh, we've been reading, yes, uh, the people are not shedding their virus uh, as fast as they would we would expect them to. And yes, there's been some reoccurrence and you know, people having some long-term effects, uh, like even after uh, like getting uh, discharged after being uh, from, you know, uh, after COVID. Okay. They have body aches, they have, you know, I use patient expression on the wind. And when I talk to my wife, that's what she's been saying, that, that the recovery process has been a little slow process. So just because somebody has got, you know, has been discharged uh, free of COVID, doesn't mean that they're going to be, uh, doesn't mean that they're not going to be reinfected. So we still have to, they still have to follow what's the protocol and what's the standard of um, um, care. Very uh, clear here. Uh, if there is somebody, I mean, a member in the family had a COVID, suppose uh, they come after a sufficient period of time, sufficient period of time, they bring their kids for treatment. So do you think we should, I mean, we just consider okay and go ahead with it. We have a history of family member, maybe three months ago was the COVID. So this is related to the same recurrence component. So how careful we should still be. Uh, of course, every patient we are supposed to treat them as COVID potential. But now here is a case which is, a family member of a COVID positive kid is coming to us. So if, if you're encountering a kid with COVID positive, I'm, uh, if I'm right. I've, yeah, the family, the family. family. Family member, three months yeah. that's it. So with the family, then you are not letting the family member uh, be inside the operatory. And such is the situation, as you said, you know, and if the kid does not want to to cooperate, and if you're faced with such a situation, then you uh, your options are limited. So that's when you have the other pharmacologic management, you know, either uh, sedation or taking them into the OR. Uh, I would rather just take them into the OR, get the work done, uh, and be done with it. As a no, no. What I mean to say, do we insist that they should go for a COVID test and come? I mean, should we? Uh, so, a kid. Yeah. Can we? And if they have been living with the parents, yes, yeah. I would advise to take the COVID test done for the kids. Absolutely. Yeah, because uh, you know, if you tell them no, get your child. You, your family member is COVID positive. You have to get the kid tested and come. I mean, you know, people won't take it so easy here. Yes, I mean, I, here, you know. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, for the OR, we are doing the COVID testing the day before, and okay. if. We, that you know the patient has uh, parent has been exposed or uh, been tested for uh, COVID, then yes, we are supposed to supposed to do. But here it's going to be a challenge for us. I don't know how they are uh, big the cities which are very badly affected. I'm sure they will have this risk and difficult question and way to recommend to go for a test of the whole family. I don't know whether they are subjecting the whole family to a test or just putting them in a quarantine and uh, with the whole family is tested, if they have a report and they come with a report and then we can take it up. That's going to be a very difficult task in the year, time to go. Okay, so thank you, Ilya Rajgopal, for your wonderful, uh, uh, I would say, you know, both scientific and relaxing and trying to uh, think of ourselves as well, not just keep learning for the patient care. We should also take care of ourselves. It's the real message you have given. Even, uh, of course, 
I kept myself busy, but never I never thought that I should really do sports. I should do some more exercises, some more meditation, some more relaxation. Uh, I think uh, I have to change now. <laughs> There is always time to change. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 Danu, uh, I, I wanted to say I'm very much a part of you, uh, guys. I'm an Indian citizen still. So yeah, from Chennai. Yes. Yes. So uh, you know, it was a great opportunity for me to uh, come and talk to you all virtually. I hope to meet you guys at some time uh, in the near future. Uh, and then I'll start allowing the flights back to India, and hopefully, I think it will be later this year or into the next year. I don't know whether you are a member of our ISPPD. You should try joining us as a member. Uh, I'm sure the president and secretary will be very happy to keep you on board and uh, as an Indian uh, member. I mean, Absolutely. of course, your yeah, your speciality is international. I think there, I think there must be some way to accept you in as an associate member. Humble, yeah, I, I am. I am not promising. Let the board decide whenever you apply. <laughs> uh, and uh, I would like to say there is a large number of uh, participants still on because not like a lecture class or uh, you know sometimes in a conference meeting people just uh, hardly see people. There is a still uh, I would say 75% of them are still on and listening to us. Thank you, participants. You are very dear to me, and I am very happy that the president as well as our secretary both are all still on live uh, they are with us and special thanks to uh, dr sivakumar for uh, being with us as a panelist and my whole team here uh, now over to paras to conclude thank you dr thank you dr ilaya uh, that was a very informative and uh, practice oriented presentation uh, we appreciate you joining us uh, very early there from US and matching up with our time here in India. So no, it is very kind of you and uh, uh, you gave us a lot of encouraging points because many of the dentists here in India are basically apprehensive whether they should resume or not. So with the kind words, what you have to, encouraging words what you have taken, I hope that some of them would gather some courage to resume their practice with caution. Uh, at this time, I would like to thank all the participants who participated in today's webinar. Uh, we would be uh, sending the e-certificates to your email, respective email IDs. And we hope to see you soon in a short time from now. So from my side, from my side, it is a, a thank you, uh, stay safe and take care. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, sir.